all the Jamaica Select Board we need to order. June, no, June. Oh, I wish it was June. August uh, 24th. Uh, first on the agenda is to approve the minutes of the August 10th meeting. If you review that, please. I have. Uh, oh, excuse me. Hold on a second. What happened to my oh, secretary? Oh, Flower needs to come. Yeah. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Ed. <Yeah. laughs> How you doing? Hello, sir. Do you mind if I? No, it's fine. Are you going to over? No. no. We'll give him the time. We'll open at 7.05. Okay. First on the agenda is to approve the minutes of the August 10th meeting. limits on dirt roads. I kind of rewrote a suggested amendment to that because it was a little bit more involved than just talking about speed limits on dirt roads. So I wrote, and I throw this out as a possibility, at the request of residents, Mr. Fraser brought a proposed amendment to the, bought, brought a proposed amendment to the town traffic, uh, to the town traffic ordinance that would designate and post the speed limits on River Road to be 35 miles per hour. Mr. Brusso suggested the town, instead of this amendment, propose or prepare an amendment designating all unpaved roads in Jamaica to be posted at 35 miles per hour. A discussion of the costs and impacts ensued. The plan was tabled for further research. So I think this, they, they, the residents proposed something. You brought it up. You suggested something different, and then we were to go, go ahead with some research. Right. Okay. I think definitely it ought to include, indicate that it was tabled. Yeah. Yeah, and that, that that discussion is at the table, right. pending the research. That's what happened. You have that written down, so you can give that to Ed. Yeah, I have it right here. Okay. That'll save the pattern to remember what I just said, because I don't know. Okay. Are you going to give me that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I'll give it to you. And I move that we accept the minutes as amended. Uh, do we have a second? Second. Okay, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Okay, number two is to approve the timesheets for the town office, district highway transfer station. Number three, the select board to review and sign the select board orders. Time for public concerns. We don't have public. You're not public. You are number seven. <laughs> um, we have an excess weight permit from Trees Inc. Rutland, and we also have uh, we have everything is with it. Their insurance and whatnot. And uh, oh, good. And we'll put the little. I think the sticky's missing. Yeah, we need to put the sticky. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 So we have a. So we should do a motion on that, don't we? I always forget. Is that the excess um, weight permit? Yeah. The excess weight permit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This um, the trees inc are the ones who are working on the trees on the. State park. Oh. So this specifically has to go across yeah, the wood deck bridge. Did that get worked out? Well, to find the worked out, we got it pretty clear we're not going over 36,000 pounds. Okay. And he is suggesting here that the area lift maximum weight request is 35,650. <laughs> See, the, the rules got to do how many axles. And this guy's three axles, six axles goes over at 36,000. I'll have to look at the book. But his so wood chipper's two axes at 25,000, that's within the tolerances. So I'm guessing that if I were to go upstairs and get it, this may or may not actually hit it because it's got to be six axes over 36,000 36, pounds. So I laid that on the table because technically, you know, we're talking about going over a wood deck bridge, six axles, 36,000 pounds, and that's the most. He wants to bring 35,000 with three axles. Um, and then the dump truck he's asking for two axles at 25,000. I don't think that's the problem. I think it's the big one. So in other words, um, if he had more axles, that would be a better number. 
the 35,000. So well, 36,000 on 36. six axles is the maximum for that bridge according to the engineers. Okay. So, oh, so oh, whether it has six axles or not? No, no, that's with six axles. Okay. Because then the weight is dis distributed more. Right. More that's what, that's what, what I will do is I'll go upstairs and check because I've got the, the specifics. And upstairs. he wants to do it with three axles. We'll have to, we'll have to look at okay, this. So Which means that do you think this is correct? What he's asking for? No, I don't. I think what he's asking for, three axles, 35,000. Okay, so, seats. all right, so when you just do your research on it, I will find if out it's exactly. correct, then I think we should get permission for the yeah, upper yeah. to sign helps. that. Yep. Excess weight permit. I so move. Okay. Any further discussion? I think we need a second, sorry. Uh, I guess I'm not quite sure whether we should approve it tonight because you guys are more reason. Well, she's saying if it fits within yeah. the scope of the engineering reports. So if he if he's if it's 35, 650 works on three axes, I don't think it does, but I'll look it up to be sure. Then we can uh, allow it to go through. But if it doesn't, then yeah, we'll, we'll bring discuss it up. It with yeah. We'll bring it up next time. Yeah. Okay, I guess so it's pending. Right. This is a pending motion. Right. Okay, so why don't we do the research first then? Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. I feel more comfortable. With All right, no motion. Yeah. We'll just do the yeah, research on the back. Yes, yes. Okay. If it's right. correct. Right. Yeah, yeah, we'll pass it, but if it's not. Let's wait the next table for right. next time. Yeah. The, the only thing is, the uh, I talked to the uh, state people calling me from the state parks, and they were all ready to go forward with this, and she called to find out if he had asked, requested this. And the answer at that time, which was last week's time, was not yet. So I don't know if there's a time constraint, but I will certainly get in touch with them, make sure it's okay. all working properly. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Next is Nelson Coleman. He is our sexton for the um, Rossenville Cemetery. Nelson? Yeah, we just got two issues, and I think Lex has already kind of covered them, that on the one side, she's got, have you got the deed there? I do. The deed? that says that we have a right of way and we're having quite a problem with the purpose. I guess they're the renters, right? Yeah, the renters, correct. That they won't even let us use the right of way coming out of the Rossville Cemetery. Because out of the, if you're going into Rossville Cemetery from Gilbert, you go straight through and you come back out on Route 30. Yeah. And, and he's arguing that he's closing gates and stuff like that. And I just think we ought to send in the owners a letter and say, we have this right of way and we want to maintain that right of way so that we have it. And so that's the first thing. And which one, which entrance is he blocking? The one is going there to the road or the Route 30 side? He, he is, is the Route 30 yeah. side. Yeah. Route 30. There's a gate. Well, he's not blocking it. There's a gate in the cemetery. And you just keep closing it. And people see it and say, oh, we're not supposed to go through there. And I walked through there once. Right after, I think it was right after Irene. But I was down checking on the cemetery. And I walked that way because the road was blocked. He caught me back over by the little bit farm and caught him went up one side of me and down the other. Really? And he said, you have no right to use that. I said, well, I believe it's right away. And he said, only for people, you know, that, well, I said, I'm the sex. And he goes, oh. <laughs> but since then, but since then, he's been arguing with people. I just think we need to put it right into him and, or to the owners. To the owner, and right. then go from there. So that's kind of my request tonight, just to get a letter off and see where it goes. And then the second thing, and, and I guess Lexa said she's going to write a letter to him too. On the other side of the cemetery, it's been going, I didn't realize it until last year, and I kind of tried to stop it by wiring the fence up, and every time I do, Peter, Peter Engelhart owns the first house on Goodwill Road on the left. And he is going into the cemetery with his lawnmower and going back onto his property. And he's going in off of Goodwill Road. And I've wired the fence up two or three different lines with a chain link fence, and he just cuts it down. But he's he's and coming. This is good to go over here. And this is our access off to the road. He's coming in across here, in here, and you know, he's got a pond here he can't access at the present time, and he's coming in here. So, and the other reason I want to get this stopped, and I didn't realize that until the spring. In the springtime, Chris Lowe is pretty sure that he's dumping his leaves and debris from the spring cleanup on the cemetery property. Uh -huh. And I just think we need to stop this. And he, if he wants to mow his pond, he needs to build a little bridge and get a lawn more across it. So I just think we that need one to. That one, I think we'll get in touch with Paul Gillies to write a letter to him regarding that. 
Because that's not so right. I just that's think it's something, right you know, I was... So he keeps taking a chain, chain link fence down? Oh, I, I wired it with at least 15 pieces of electrical wire and I went down about two days later and it was right off cotton and open. Okay. Yeah, you just, I mean, you can just snip and repair wire yeah. covers, but... Yeah. So I would just like to have something a little more formal than me going to him and have it so that, uh, and then if he continues, we have some teeth to you yeah. know, say no. Yeah, we should love going right So we, yeah. everybody's in agreement. And what? Where's that right away you were talking about? The, 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 I gave you a copy of it. Oh, I, I got this. Yeah. 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 This comes in this here. Is, yeah, this comes in right. Uh, Oh, right where, where, where the gate is right here. Oh, okay. That, that comes just like that. And then you go across here and go right up. Okay. That's the path. Yeah, he was complaining that people were driving on a septic and everything like that. Well, septic is quite a ways away from it. Yeah. And it's pretty well defined to go in there. But even I was talking to Lex and he was saying how it's tearing up. You can't even tell people. I mean, it's all grass. Well, I just drove it today and yeah. there's a couple of little light tracks. There's certainly not no damage to it. No. It looks like it's yard, but it could have been a more right. little right. track. Right. But we had a legal right away there. Yes. yes. So I got a copy of we've got a copy of that underneath this thing. Here. And that's what. Okay, so yep. when you send the letter, just send them a copy of the right away. Uh, oh, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Same oh, okay. yeah. Now that's. I that's, support that's all of those letters. letters. That's that letter you just talked about, the one that the right of way issue. That's specifically for the right of way issue access. Right. He's talking about the fence. Right. That's, that's another issue. issue. So that's yeah, two that's that's nothing to do with right of way. No, I, I, I support yeah. both. This both one will be done letters. by the lawyer. Yeah. This one will be done by the select board. Okay. And this one will go sure. right to the owner, and this one will go to that. The owner okay. will get the information on that. Okay. Okay, can and then once that letter is written, then you go back up and tie the fence up again? Yeah. And we'll see what happens. What? I may be taking What check. are your... Oh, I can't yeah. just put one of those Jersey oh, Barrier abilities. <laughs> what? Jersey Barrier? Well, I mean, we can we could do something like, I mean, we could make a more permanent chain, yeah. and then if he cuts it after the letter, then we could almost say you're destroying, you know, Trust destroying... Say, right? I mean, the, the thing that I didn't realize, like I said, until the spring, that he's dumping and that's definitely in the right. It's in the cemetery. Yeah. 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 But that's again, we don't know for sure. That's right. just a speculation on the part of right. the right. right. But, but there are definitely jump, uh, grass clippings here. Yeah, and Chris Lowe said he does not dump there. So we know that it's not Chris Lowe, and he's the only one that does the cemetery cleanup every spring. Right. That was, I had a conversation with him. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right, we'll take care of that. I'll send you a copy of the letters that we sent okay. to them so you'll have it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next we had David Mink. He's here on the Arts Council, I believe. Good evening, folks. Good evening. Yeah. Um, so I'm trying to, as my understanding, revive the Jamaica Community Arts Council which I understand at one time was the Jamaica Town Hall Committee. Right, a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. And then it became the Jamaica Arts Community Council. Arts Council. Right. Which it continued to operate as a quasi-committee agent of the town. It was not a non-profit structure. It was... Yeah, I know the town didn't... They didn't take care of any of the monies, the checking account, right. or anything like that. It yeah. was the group that started. They right. took care of that. They were that. managing yeah. their own money. Yeah. Because from what I, the history I'm reading, the town didn't really want to do that. Right. They didn't really want to. No, because we don't with the uh, recreation committee or anything like that. It's a lot easier for each committee to take care of all their own and their own and stuff. And so the town owns the town halls, town halls. Now, who is liable in case of an injury on town property? The town. The town. Mm -hmm. So if an, any organization is hosting an event at the town hall and something, someone gets hurt, the town. Right. I believe also um, the people using it are supposed to notify their insurance company. I, I remember something about that with the LTC 
um, that we spoke with the LTC. I can check again um, with them. And I think, because they're our insurance carrier, the LTC, but I believe the people using it, they're supposed to have their own um, insurance for that day or days, whatever they do. Is that it? Is that it? action now? I don't, I've never heard of Yes, I believe so. I remember something about it and I vaguely, but I'll have to go back to make sure that I'm, I'm saying it correctly. Yeah. But I think that's what it is. Oh. Yeah, that does become an issue for, sure. for wedding parties and these kinds yeah, of things. Right, exactly. right. With all the but I'll check with VLTC again. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Because that was part of what I was reading and hearing was one of the reasons they didn't become a nonprofit is so they could be still be under the town's insurance and right. We'll have to do a little research on it because it's been kind of. Had we uh, given them money in years past? No, we do not give. We have them not given raised their own money. That's correct. And I do have a check. I talked to David back on July eighth, and I have this check for you. I'm not ready for it yet. Um, <laughs> you, you better be probably because. Um, you're going to have to talk to River Valley. It's dated um, September 8th, 2014. Ooh. So I would, I would suggest that you or have somebody take it, so, you know, start your committee and take this and make sure that you can get into the Yeah, I just thought it would be that. I thought this was going to be just calling some bands, having some shows, yeah, right. good time, you know? <laughs> Not exactly. He's happy to surprise. One of the things, uh, we may want to check the permits that people sign when they request. Right, we have to do a little research. We've been a little, I must say, we've been a little yeah, lax on because it. Because I, mean, I would think that that would have to be, the insurance piece would have to be on that permit. I'd have to check and see yeah. what it says. But I'll get that information for you. Okay. So, now... Does, has the Jamaica Community Arts Council been responsible for town hall maintenance? No. No? no. no the town takes care of that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And if somebody uses it, they give a deposit for cleaning and whatnot. If it's not cleaned when they leave the deposit, they don't um, get back. Okay. And then they, um, and then they pay for the, the daily use or whatever. Okay. So... The, the Arts Council would basically be renting the town hall for any shows that we produce. Yeah. Okay, so separate entity. Yeah. Okay. Oh, what was the next thing? But the renter is supposed to give it back the way they got it? Yes. yes. It's a little confusing yes. then. I mean, they don't clean it or they do clean it. Well, they, you know, they're supposed to put it back and not leave the garbage okay. or anything, right. sweep it up, right. put the chairs back, you know, and leave it right. right in good condition that they found it yeah. in. Right. And there is a section on the permit that one time, just recently, was checked um, and was not corrected where the person said that the town would do right. the cleaning. Right. And that they would pay $100 for it. But I don't we think need to that's, it. Uh, that needs to be really changed. Was there, are there plans to do work on the town hall? No. It needs some work. Well, what we're working on, Judy is working on the well. Uh, that's, our, that's our main thing right now is trying to get a drill well. Because right. right now the, the bathroom is totally off limits. Right, right. right. Where does that stand? I mean, where, where? Uh, <laughs> if you stay here a little bit longer, I'll tell you. <laughs> it's, it's Judy's working on it. Process. Uh, it's, it's a process. The folks who bought... Uh, the Heflin House, the great house next door. Yeah. Um, they're new people, hopefully. They want a well, and they're, we're working on having maybe a shared well. We're not sure, you know, with permits, because we have to go through the state. Um, very complicated. It's a very complicated. Yeah. It's, we, Judy's been working on it for two years. We already have a permit that we can begin yesterday, but something, a new, uh, Area opened up with the people who just bought the house. And, the house uh, to the south? Uh, yeah. The little white house? Or the no, Smith house. house. No, Smith house. Oh, Smith. I'm sorry, Doris House. If you're, if you're looking at the front of the town hall to right. the right. Yes, correct. 
Right near bishops. Yeah. Right, between the bishops, okay. Yeah. So that helps but it, your soul. It, it, yeah. There's a lot more to it, and I, I have to explain all that stuff. So Julian updates that every select board meeting. Yeah. If, if you had access to the PC TV. Yeah. Um, well, all I watch them. Yeah. <laughs> she usually addresses that yeah. every meeting. Every meeting. Okay. Yes, we have, yeah. We're going to release it as a soap opera. This yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Two years worth. It is. Yeah. Thank you for your continued. <laughs> Tenacity, that's what it's called. <laughs> okay. Uh, so it doesn't matter to you guys whether we're a nonprofit or not. Really. Right. And you're going to be responsible for the maintenance, maintenance of the building. Yeah. Okay. If anything goes wrong, we always put money in the budget for it to take care of it. So, do you want to take this? I will take okay, it. Okay, so, and uh, hopefully they don't want it to go bad. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure, sure they'll be fine with it, you know, that they've got I think they probably will. I think and so. I, I think I, I pretty much have that piece I need for financial management in place. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. As of today, this evening. So hopefully I can okay. get this taken care of and move forward. So okay. well, thank, thank you for your thank time. You for yeah, well, it's a great place. We don't want, you know, it should be. It should be used. It should a be lot. used, right? I think because it's such a wonderful space. Yeah. It is. It's a beautiful place. It is. Okay. Next on the agenda is. Uh, Thank you for this, doing that. This gentleman is from Wyndham South Wake, but I'm just going to skip you for a minute because this item isn't going to take very long. Unless Paul too, talks too long. Uh, uh, we have a request. Uh, at our last meeting, we talked about uh, the speed limit for the road. Uh, I checked to see if we ever did a study on it, and we did not do a study on it. Uh, so that has never been changed. Uh, we have an amendment to our traffic ordinance to um, change the speed limit from 50 miles an hour to 35 miles an hour. Um, all roads in Vermont are 50 miles an hour unless otherwise uh, posted. We have 43 dirt roads in the town of Jamaica. If we post all of them, it's going to be very, very costly with the sign on because we have to put signs on both ends, so that's, you know, 90 something signs. So I think we ought to take it one road at a time. What is your pleasure? I make a motion that we accept this traffic amendment and that we lower the speed limit from 50 miles an hour on the river road to 35 miles an hour. Tom, that being town highway number 42. And the reason we can do this without a hearing notice in the paper, we can do it to 35 miles an hour. If we wanted it any lower, then we have to have a study by the sheriff's department as opposed to we have to have hearings. So this, so we can do this without. We can do this right. Oh, I'll check into oh, it and we can do nice. this out. We can't do anything about that. I'll second. Okay. Any further discussion? Yes. Can I read just for a second? Sure. Since you're, I don't have to talk anymore because you've said everything. And so I read it quick. Right. Sorry. I thought you wrote it. No, okay. not this one. I wrote the other one. We <laughs> write that one. We forgot. It's yours. That looks a lot like mine. It is yours. That's some very close resemblance to mine. <laughs> okay. That's good. Yeah. Great. So we have a second. So we have a second. Oh, any further discussion? <laughs> Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Motion passed. All right. But so the record show I said very little. <laughs> For once, okay. Um, we have what's this gentleman's name? Okay, Andy K. Andy K. C A Y. C A Y. Andy. Um, well, you know Lou, Judy, Paul, Andy, myself, Alexa, our secretary, uh, Rich. I mean, <laughs> Ed and Rich, our cameraman. Um, Hi. Uh, first of all, let me <coughs> just let you know who he actually represents. Uh, Wind and Solid Waste has signed a contract with a company called Pristine Sun. And Andy Kay works for a company called Integrated Solar, which are partners with Pristine Sun in the solar project. So Andy is working uh, as a representative of Integrated Solar and Pristine Sun. Not, not directly with the, with the district. He's working 
for this project. He's working on this project. On this project for when you solid waste. Correct. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. And I only have six copies. <laughs> Copy. And average it out. 
you have net meter and use the utility company is effectively acting as your resource, as your battery. Uh, so you can park your credits there and then when you need them, get them back. Uh, the way benefits get reflected is directly on your bill, uh, your, your state when you install net metering at your home uh, or business, then those credits are reflected directly on your bill uh, at a direct, a direct reduction for, uh, for what you would otherwise use and what you're producing. And you also credit something called a solar adder. The solar adder is an agreement to pay a premium uh, for solar production. So for every uh, kilowatt hour of production, for smaller systems, you get 5.3 cents per kilowatt hour. For larger systems, over 15 kilowatts, you get 4.3 cents per kilowatt hour. So that's, uh, that's traditional net metering. Uh, this is an unusual project. A traditional net metering caps out at 500 kilowatts. Uh, this is as large as 5 megawatts, so that's 10 times larger than traditional net metering. Uh, the way larger projects work is one meter is installed in the project, and then all the power that comes from the project doesn't go to a building or a home or what have you, but into the grid. So it's one way traffic from the solar panels into the grid. So that's all the generation. The way the credits get applied is that through group net metering, a group of participants, and, and we're here tonight to talk to you folks about being a participant, uh, they assign their meter numbers to, uh, to that generation. And in the same manner as traditional net metering, the credits for production and the credits for the solar adder go directly onto those individual meter bills. At those participants, and if you make those participants, you would be called a so-called off-taker. You're, the, you're a buyer of power from this project, so you're an off-taker. Uh, the current first rate for these kinds of projects is 14.7 cents. Uh, on hour, and what that's based on is that's the highest residential rate currently, and that's what the legislation uh, provides the reimbursement is for these kinds of commercial accounts. Uh, because I solar ad is 4.3 cents, 4.3 cents plus 14.7 cents is 19 cents as a total credit for these kinds of projects. District from district perspective. Uh, at this level, the district ate a land lease, and that land lease is going to be equal to $4,600 per acre that's used in the final development. Currently, uh, there are five acres that are, that are planned to be used, so that's about $115,000 a year. Years, that amounts to $2.3 million going directly to the district. So that's an indirect benefit uh, to you folks as a 2.8% um, interest holder in the district. Uh, it, it, that, uh, there are off tick benefits. That's what risks and it's free to is a great sell power from the project for flat. Uh, price of 13.9 cents per kilowatt hour for 20 years. When those benefits are added up over 20 years, that's worth about $15.7 million. So adding that to the least revenue, the total benefit of about $18 million. Uh, you won't read this very well on the screen, but this moment, what I'm doing here on the right is showing how the uh, production of this project is 
calculated, it's about 5,572 kilowatt capacity that the system will have. Uh, what goes to 1,278 sun hour equivalents per year. Produced about 7.123 uh, million kilowatt hours a year. Uh, now that uh, that 7.123 million what hours a year is highest day you turn it on. Solar uh, panels are in silicon, and silicon as the electrons travel across the layers of the silicon, it will degrade over time. It degrades very slowly, but nevertheless degrades. So these panels rated be warranted for 80% uh, of their production after 25 years. Uh, so the degradation up to 20% in the first 25 years. Uh, so that degradation is reflected in this column for the 20 years. There's the starting production. So you start at about 7 million in the, in the first year, and by year 20, you're down to uh, less than 6 million. Uh, kilowatt hours a year. Uh, this complication assumes the utility rate currently of that 14.7 cents that happens to be the residential rate. Uh, mo most towns, and including Jamaica, have a higher utility rate than that. So you will actually see higher savings than this than this generic uh, presentation here. I'll show that to you. That rate appreciates over time, then the, and the total cost of buying that power in the marketplace from Green Mountain Power is perfect. that column there. So that's the that, that's avoided cost as a result of going solar, if you will. So back, back to this presentation here. Uh, that avoided cost that's reflected there. Uh, on this first column is the actual cost of electricity, and that's the payment pristine sun of that 13.9 cents. Uh, Ten years, however, is a, there's this solar out of 4.3 cents. So 13.9 cents minus 4.3 has a net cost of 9.6 cents your cost of power in the first 10 years, then it goes to the 13.9 for the remaining 10 years. So that's, that's cost of power. So that amounts to about $15 million over 20 years. The avoided cost is about $30 million for the entire district. And then when you add that lease payment to it, there's the $18 million in, in total benefits for the project over time. And so let's, let's talk about what it means to make up. Uh, make uh, has fixed average electric bill. It's about 18.4 cents. That's, as I stated, uh, the, the prior assumption was 14.7. Your actual rate is 18.4. Uh, once again, I'll try to read this. I'll just explain what we've done here as we've looked at uh, eight utility bills for the town of Jamaica. We added those up and, and those amount to about $1,230 a month of so July. Uh, before we're done, we would uh, look at a couple of years worth of bills and make sure we uh, accurate, reflect the pluses and minuses that go on with the billing cycles and so forth. But tonight, I've used that one month as an example. We annualize that number to $14,764 a year. And we uh, added up the amount of kilowatt hours that were used, and on an annual basis, that's 80136 So 
divide that those dollars by those kilowatt hours that's where we arrive at the 18.4 cents average cost of power. Now we have to arrive at a system size to how much power would you need to offset your consumption. And the way we do that is we take that $14,000 and we divide it at the amount of reimbursement that you'll get from Green Mountain Power. And that's a 19 cents that I spoke of previously. So that gives the value of about 8,000 kilowatt hours a year. I'm sorry, this is uh, numbers intensive. It's, it, it is at that. Uh, hopefully I'll end on a less numbers intensive note. Uh, and when, we, uh, when we arrive at the system size, we have to divide that number by the amount of sun hours that we expose these solar panels to per year. And that gives about six, one kilowatts. And that gets round that off to the number of panels we would have. But what it works out to is about 196 panels for each 810 watts. Each of those panels is about three feet wide and about a five and a half feet tall. How many watts did you say per panel? Ten. Say again. Three hundred and ten. Three hundred and ten. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I see it up there now. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. So how that relates uh, here, uh, for just in the district, you are an eight percent interest holder in the in the waste district. So we look at oh, the project. If you had a straight line per route of share of this project, okay, you would use 154 uh, kilowatts. You're using 61. And your interest, the project would be about 1.1%. Okay. Any other questions? Done here. So there's the 196 uh, 310 watt panels. Uh, six point kilowatts who would produce about 78,000 kilowatt hours a year. And we have solar that cost about $421,000. And with solar that cost about $165,000. So that's the statement made up over 20 years of $256,000. In year one, the statement said for $100, or you would say if that much cost of electricity is. And by over the 20 years, you would save about 61% of your cost of electricity. Your essential being handed a check for $149,000 the day this, this commission is costing you nothing. Yes, there's a bit of Your annual cost of electricity at this line that shows with solar. Uh, what that cost of electricity will be, that step that there is the end of the solar adder period. So the solar adder is for 10 years. Uh, it hires your, your cost steps up a bit. Uh, and here, your annual savings rate starts at that 50%, climbs to about 65, drops to the solar adder, and then uh, regains the ground to about 69%. And so, what is process? Uh, the way these transactions together, we would ask you to execute what's called subscription agency agreement. Essentially, that's contract says that the town is willing to buy power for the next 20 years. Uh, and we would identify the meters that are going to be assigned to that arrangement. And Christine's son pledging to you to sell that power for that foot fixed 
rate of 13.9 cents for that period. Twenty years, uh, there could be an extension. The same thing has to happen at the district level. The Christine only has a commitment from the district for a 20-year period. It makes sense for both parties to continue after that, and that will happen. And it would like to be that you folks would be approached to extend your bringing as well. Uh, as I said, there's no cost. So therefore, uh, the legislation allows us to sell to any municipality. So then we might go to London, or we might go to, or we can go to school districts. And there's been a, a lot of interest in our, in our project. Did you say they don't do street lights? They don't do the street lights. They do schools. Yes. No, they don't street lights. Oh, I'm sorry, it's a school. That's right. Because that's where we. That's where our biggest costs yeah. are. Wouldn't that street be? Street lights. They're eight thousand really? dollars a year. Ooh. Is our street lights, our buildings, which is the town office, town hall, historical building, Rossville School Library, Highway Department and Transfer Station, we run approximately eight thousand dollars a year. So, uh, so half and half, basically. How would this so, you? what would what would our savings be? We have to exclude the street lighting. So, say it's eight thousand dollars a year to supply to buy through Green Mountain Bank that we pay every year for all of our buildings. What would our savings be in a year? And so those numbers don't I my numbers. But I right, I just took I, it off of our uh, this is just estimates. And, and so I just put one month, not twelve months, and that would need to be done. But based on that one month, uh, none of these eight bills were street lights. And, and so of these bills, in wise, it's fourteen thousand dollars. So that differs from what do you have? That that differs from your eight. You count not by name. That's just for Jamaica. 
That's right. Mm. Yeah, Terry gave me a bill for this. Yeah, but we don't pay the skip. I, that's why I didn't have the school. Oh, okay. Because okay. I don't have that. We don't pay the school. That. That's the, the difference. This, was, this is just our, what we pay. We work, I'm not including yeah, the school. Yeah, that makes sense. That's what the difference is. Okay. Yeah. However, uh, the school will benefit from the program as well. Mm -hmm. Maybe they would be able to as soon as we are. Pardon me? That's right. We would be able to get in on our as soon as we are. And I. If we get. Great, great. But I think, I don't know if, I think we can make the decision for the school. I don't think that the, 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 the school has to be brought in as a separate uh, party to this agreement. I think they do. I mean, there, there's they their do. money that's being spent. Right. Yeah, I would think they do. They would have to. We okay, we'll have, have to. Uh, no, they have a school. We can't We'll have, have to that. approach them and uh, do this them. whole thing all over again for them. Yeah. It'd be oh, like sorry. that, uh, <laughs> that uh, internet thing that we, Got yeah. kind of yeah. into the school that we're right. paying tons of money on. Yeah. And I don't want that to happen again. It doesn't look like we would be paying tons of money. I mean, we've been paying monthly to school. Well, no, I know. Yeah, that goes back to a higher yeah. decision, yes. I mean, so we want to make sure we're making the right decision for the right reasons. Okay. Uh, I'm going to ask this question as a board member. Uh, you know the answer. <laughs> That's the answer. But I'm going to ask it as yeah. a board member. Uh, what happens if we consume more energy than we contract for? That's, that's trouble. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to contract for what you can use, and the reason is you can't you can't carry credits beyond 12 months, so you need to use them up. And so, to the extent that uh, some change with your billings, uh, then you would want to. Uh, give up every adjustment. And so that's allowed at least four times during the year uh, to make that reallocation and that ton of other towns. Okay, what happens if, uh, let's say, the Jamaica school merges with another school and therefore we no longer have that meter? might be true if we have a new highway garage and all of a sudden its consumption is different. That's right. Or what I've been thinking is with the way science is going, there may be a whole new way of getting energy within a 20 year period that might be even more efficient than this, but we would have to stay within the program for the 20 years. Once you agree, you're locked in. You're locked, program unless you help your business put up part. So it would cost us money to get out of it. Uh, not necessarily. Uh, barring the scenario that you right. and if the if the market is fit normal in in a crest, then I would expect uh, that your value might be higher in five years than it is today for getting out. That your value might. Yep, your interest in it. Uh, it this is a very strong economics. It's cost 
You have nothing. And you're getting 50 percent off your electric bill. Uh, you're you're not going to get that. That's it. Eight dollars, forty-eight thousand dollars check. So, uh, so I think that this real opportunity to, to bargain with others to take over your interests if that's what you choose to do. Have you had other municipalities join this program? And if so, how many? This first presentation dinner. Okay. You're, you're absolutely first. Loops. We're the first. Loops. Yeah. Sure. I asked you the question. Did you make it to be first? Uh -huh. uh, because I felt that being a friendly group, it would be a good, uh, a good first one, so we can get some feedback as right. to uh, how to approach some of the. And you've business. been in business how long? Uh, I have been in business for four years. Okay. Uh, Christine Sun was founded in the early two thousands. And where are they located? California. Oh, California. Where all the sun is. <laughs> We have good sunshine here. Sometimes. Yeah. Rattleboro has a, uh, a solar array on Route 91. You may have seen it. Mm -hmm. That array was put in by integrated solar. Oh, really? Right now, on the uh, holiday. Will it cost us? Yeah. It may not cost us anything. There's no cost to us, right? Not up front. But not up front. But is there a cost? to the district that we will get billed for it. No, in fact, the opposite is true. The district, as you pointed out, will have 118, up to $118,000 of lease revenue every year, which will either uh, be a, a reduction in our um, assessment, or would you be used to fund additional programs? Okay, I have a question. If this, I know it's Obviously, I'm stupid. You've got a company here that obviously has to make money. But you're telling us that this company is giving us solar power for absolutely no cost to the district and to us. Uh, absolutely no upfront costs, that's correct. Okay, so 30%. what is the. There is no, there's so no cost. How itself. will they make their money off of us? Andy? <laughs> So, uh, solar has a bundle of benefits associated with it, uh, and many of them are tax driven. And so, there's a 30% tax credit on the solar system. So, if you, if you build a $10 million solar project, you're getting $3 million of that tax credit from the federal government. Uh, this depreciation, and that depreciation add another several million dollars to the project. Uh, there are, uh, this is a tax credit that also extends itself. And so that in addition to that, I put solar up, that benefits free amount of power, you're getting a retail reimbursement for the power, and then you're getting the solar adder, which is an inducement for doing solar. It's you add up all that bundle of benefits, uh, then what you need, what you need is you need an off taker to take the energy. So it's uh, someone who will commit to buying it for me. And that's what we're talking about with you. And so in order to induce you as the off taker to come into the transaction, uh, we offer a discount on what what you would pay otherwise for your power. So the economics are very compelling from pristine side and the economics are very compelling from your side. That's what makes so these the transactions. So the power would be paying you for the electricity you're making through your through the solar panels and you're offering the municipality a portion of a reduced rate. Yeah. Basically. Or, or I mean I, I know that it's simple. <laughs> yes, yeah, another way to read that power pay the town. Yeah. has a lot of power to sell with all these tax breaks and depreciation and benefits. It's not costing you 
you have a lot of extra juice to like free power. Not free, but I mean you had to do something to generate it, but it sounds like them giving us a fifty percent discount is you know, they're not it's not a bit time business, but they're not really losing a lot of money. Uh, they're not losing any money. No. Uh, they're, no, I never they're making good money. Right, it. I understand. Uh, the, the deals are are sufficiently attractive right. to allow for that kind of discount. Uh, I will tell you that uh, this this uh, county is unheard of in Vermont. As to my knowledge, I have not seen transaction this rich. Uh, and I'll tell you that the more typical discount and, and the number two bidder who bid on this project uh, at a discount of about 25%. So there's a considerable difference with what this team is offering here. They were they quite tested in their pricing. So let me ask a question. And the piece, and I'm sort of echoing uh, Lex's idea, of, you know, what are you getting out of it? How come it sounds so good to us? That kind of spookiness. But I guess the question then is, for tonight's decision, you need, well, maybe I've got a mistake, I wouldn't. Do you need a set number of towns to go along with this before you can contract with Christine? Or have you already elected to contract with Christine, we're just trying to get us on board? We've contracted with Pristine. They have an opt-out clause which says that if we can't find the, the off-takers to, to consume the power, yeah. then they can elect to, to uh, opt out of the deal. And what percentage, I mean, how many, what percentage of your towns need to do this? Um, we need to, uh, we need to have Enjoy, four, right. four, four million or four megawatts uh, committed. Okay. Now, not necessarily by district towns. They can be any municipalities in the state or any schools. Oh, I can. But as long as they get whatever, 4.6 or 5.6 commitment, they can go forward. Anything less than that, then it's not economically feasible for you guys. Right. It's a full discussion. Hi. Here in the night, and so Jamaica is there. to go to district towns first right. mm -hmm. and then go to the rest of the municipalities after the district towns have had their opportunity gotcha. to commit. Now one thing you did say, uh, let me just, just roll it again, like, okay, this, all of this, we, we know we're always going to have town office, all these buildings and stuff like here, and then with the school added in it, 
in the school if Jamaica happens to close their school and go to towns of and we lose the school. Do we lose something? Lose does it cost us anything if they move out? Uh, we don't have power, we can't roll over. Right. Well, but my understanding is the schools are we're not paying for the school's power right. with this plan. Right. This is our power, not the schools. So if the school closes, if the school if the district elects to join in the whatever the second or third round and go talk to other people, that's between the school and these guys. It should not affect ours. Am I correct in that? So the school should be separate. Yeah, it and would be better would, for us. It would be better for us. Right? Right. Well, in that they're going to, if they bail, suppose they do bail, they'll probably go to another school district which may or may not have all the right. contract. Right. I mean, it's but it's independent of our cost. So this company could ask the school, or be, are we saying the school's going to be in the municipality? Well, we, that's, I guess, something we have to look into. Um, I think the school, it sounds like the school is separate. They are separate. They would probably have to go into a, a, separate, a separate room. Okay. But if, if, they were to, if they were to close and go to Townsend, for example, merge with Townsend, let's say. But it wouldn't affect us. Because it wouldn't affect us, okay. but they would have to find a, another off table for that. Right. Okay. But this is great opportunity here. Oh, the school should be notified of it. Of right. that opportunity and, and made aware of the comments yeah. so that they could choose to opt in. I'm not going to talk about money and percentages. I'm actually, I, I need to get this off of my chest. So since I'm not one to keep things in, here I go. I'm very much in favor of the ecology of gas and oil and the new pipeline and all of that going through and of the, the whole idea of the, that we're just doing a terrible, terrible job to our planet. But, and the but is that one of the things that bothers me is that are we replacing the issue with um, all of the uh, carbon uh, dioxide that's forming with what I feel is unsightly uh, apparatus. I, I see there's one on Route 35 uh, as you're going towards Grafton, that's there. I know they're popping up all over the place. The one thing that I like about this particular project is that it's already in an area that really can't be used because it's on top of the landfill. And I think that's very good. But I, I am having a problem with what this is doing. And I know that we as Vermonters fight diligently to keep our state pristine. Uh, believe it or not, I have no problem with windmills. I have lived in Europe where in uh, different parts of Belgium, I guess it was, or Holland, and they're beautiful. You see them just going, and of course that people don't like that one. But it is, it's a problem, and I'm I really betwixt and between about going this route, and yet I know we have to do something. So I know this has nothing to do with numbers, and uh, it might be that we just have to bite the bullet and do something that I think is going to <coughs> create a major problem in the pristine part of our, of our land here. Because they are. If you look around and you travel around, you see they're cropping up all over the place. So that's where I'm at. You're not alone. They are. Mm -hmm. uh, and certainly this legislative session spiking uh, was one of the number one issues in transfer solar. And the example that started going towards Grafton on Route 35 is just what we're trying to prevent. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a poor sighting. Mm -hmm. That's that poor aesthetics, lack of planning, and it shouldn't be done that way. Mm -hmm. uh, what it's school or on a field or on a landfill is an excellent place to put it. It's, it's, it's an industrial site. It's right. unusable land. Another 
it's was. unusable. Mm -hmm. that, that can't be seen from many, many vantage points. Right. So it looks really like, you know, in that respect. Mm -hmm. But a uh, significant change technology wise, technology wise, is going to challenge us. And, and so and we've, got, really weird. we've got to figure out how to balance that. Right. And in the last 10 years, that balance has been in favor of a kind of unchecked scope development. Mm -hmm. uh, but I tell you that that landscape has changed dramatically in the last 24 months here. Uh -huh. In the last 12 months, it's changed dramatically. Yeah. So, yeah. Thanks for listening. <laughs> I think that's, I respect your opinion and your view. But this opportunity here, where they're being placed, I don't think it has anything to do with what's going to happen in the rest of the state, whether it's your company or another one. I have no problem where these panels are being placed and whether or not that it's going to be an issue in the rest of the state is, it doesn't concern me sitting on this board with, with your presentation you've given us tonight. So I just have some concerns of what Judy brought up about technology something really comes along is Christine going to try to keep up with this site you know that we're talking about here with maybe upgraded solar panels or, or whatever may happen within the 20 years we're in, in a contract with you or you know that kind of thing how because it all sounds really good I think we'd be all right with it no matter what happens you know, in 20 years or 25 years or 35 years, something that or anything like that to us. But, <laughs> I mean, you'll be having to put new panels in on that, in that site. But that's just one thing. I, I just want to say that I, I appreciate the presentation and I think it's, a, it's a, an attractive offer to this municipality, mm -hmm. to me as a board member. You know, it makes sense, but also listening to lots of looking down the road, you know, about what maybe having to get out and try to sell our, our yeah, shares. Sure, right. We don't know. So we couldn't, we have to do it for 20 years. Jamaica You have to do it for yeah, 20 years. Right. And if you opt out any time in that 20 right. years, that's up to you. And it's no penalty to us? There's no, no penalty. Okay. There's only the penalty that you have to find a replacement. And so you're going to contact us and you're going to say, we want out for all of it or part of it. Uh, can, you, can you get us a replacement? Would you know you would help us? We would help you do that. that. And then we get on the phone and we call uh, the, the logical okay. replacements, uh, which are probably the users of the town of Brattleboro. Authority, the school districts, uh, they will have much greater capacity need than we can satisfy. And, and so there will always be demand there, is my belief. Uh, now, from a technology standpoint, uh, there's no smoke bullet. Uh, the solar panels that were used today at 18% efficiency are great, but they're not a heck of a lot different from the panels in 19. Step five when my firm got started, that we're at 11 percent efficient. It's gone from 11 to 18 in 40 years. But uh, that's that's progress in the lab. You can create panels that are in the 40s, but you can't do it in the field. Uh, there are lots of great ideas about uh, solar panels that uh, receive radiation from the bottom and from the top. Uh, it got Cardboard fashion and panels that are three dimensional, uh, so you get more per square foot. And so there are lots of and some of them are tilting too. I know and, to follow the sun. And we do that now. Uh, done. But I don't expect, frankly, that what goes in landfill uh, will be touched in the next three five years. It's Producing the asset, the decision that's made for the investment up front 
is based on the best information we have right now. It's based on tax credits. It's based on the depreciation. It's based on the solar adder. It's based on all the benefits. And, and you make that choice and then cast it in place and you manage it over time. But there, there will never be sufficient inducement to take all that away okay. and scrap it and, and put in the latest and greatest because it's a good asset that's going to produce for a long period of time. And so that won't change. Now, the next one that's done 10 years from now on the landfill, that might look quite different. And it will reflect the tax credits and the solar adder and the bundle of benefits that's available then. And so the economics will be shifted. If we can install solar for less than $2 a watt, just in 2008, so that same ground mounted array, it was $11 a watt. However, the rates of return today are a little, a little better, but not a lot better. The state standards were much higher in 2008. The, the tax credit in 2008 wasn't available, it was in 2009. So the market shifts based on new information, whether it's technology change or economics. And you have to, your best choice is based on what you have today. If you sit on the fence and say, I'm not going to take action because I think the next greatest thing is coming down the pipe, good luck. You, you never take action. So you have to make good choices with what you have in front of you and what the cards you have. Some of the corporations, uh, when they have like cell towers or Vermont Yankee, etc., have written in contracts that when there is no longer a use, then they dismantle. I think what isn't that true for Vermont Yankee? Then they would dismantle. That's fine. And that now would that be something that your company would have in in, in the contract with uh, Wyndham? solid waste that you, after the 20 years, would dismantle with your blah, blah, blah. Or, or, boy. And so it's likely that there will be a permanent asset then. Mm -hmm. And so it won't make sense to dismantle yet. Mm -hmm. uh, whether a pristine wants to stay in it and continue with it, or whether they'd like someone else to take over their interest. I will doubt. And, and so uh, there are many different possibilities. But you show me an earth asset. I have a question. I thought I could find another one, but I can't. And the, what do we know? Do we get waste? And recycling. Metals is coming. Oh, oh I'm well, sure. I was thinking there's a lot of metal there. There's going to be a huge market for that. <laughs> Another off the wall question, but it's one that's been kicking around, not with me, but specifically with people with others. Um, I work in a business that really does uh, pay very close attention to the weather. And I'm wondering what your statistics, I mean, how far back do you go? How did we know? How, what were you getting the idea of the number of sun days versus not sun days? I know you have some numbers, but I don't know where they came from. Can you give me a sense of where that's coming from? Lab, uh, and software and publishes this data. Mm -hmm. uh, the heart of it is about a 30 year period, not a 100 year period, so it's a relatively short period of time. Uh, but those sun hours uh, will vary, plus uh, minus 10% year to year, uh, but they're very predictable. So 10% variance. They, they get the variance, that's right. It's not, that's not very much. They're pretty uniform. Yeah. I mean, we're forecasting about 178 sun hours per year. And so with marketing systems, we monitor the, the system. So we check its performance, and then we monitor it day by day, month by month. And it's very predictable. Mm -hmm. It's very, if, if you have a lot of 
skating or your, or your area that, that has unusual uh, weather, fogging, or whatever that might be, that might be an influence that you need to pay special attention to. But for the most part, it is why don't the Latin's landfill is uh, 1278 is a good number, uh, 13,000 is too high, uh, 1250 is too low. Just don't plant trees. <laughs> you don't want that shade. <laughs> so I'm, just, I'm just thinking in terms of so many of the businesses in Vermont, in Vermont are, are weather driven. And I know in the ski business it's a crapshoot every year. You don't know whether they're going to win or lose. And I know the ski industry is very closely watched on that thing. And the predictions and all the stuff that, frankly, are useless until the spring and you look back. And I guess I'm thinking in terms of the solar energy, as she mentioned that this is a new technology, we really don't have 30 years of experience. Well, you guys have been after 40, so I guess you do. But we really don't have a real long uh, experience of how Vermont's fluctuating weather applies to the standard that you're seeing across the country. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think that's a pretty good book of knowledge, yeah. and I think it's really uniform. The one variable that, that's the way you design is uh, you're trying to get as much in one spot as you can. And, and what you have to do to do that is, is not tilt the panels up too high. Because if you tilt it up too high, you're going to move them apart so they don't shade one another. So you break them down and bring them closer together. But when you break them down, uh, your client is now exactly. It's like to be at 35 degrees, and it's like to be three feet off the ground. The normal years, it's going to shed automatically and it's not going to back up. Uh, for a field like this, we're covering that footprint pretty aggressively. And, and we're looking at a 20 tilt, which is low. And so the remote maintenance required in a year like this past year uh, will be scope blowing those rows uh, to, to make sure that three foot clearance is there and occasionally. Uh, breaking those panels off. So it's going to require some basis. So that's, that's right. That, that's probably the biggest component. Yeah. The next one is just mowing grass. Grass doesn't get mowed. Foot lit. And so that's, that's kind of unique. Yeah. This element. If those of us who are praying for large snow, and right. you're saying, no, 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 we're <laughs> <laughs> right. oh, it's right off the bat. I'm honest here. Okay, so we'll clear the panel. That's the spirit. The district that would take care of the cost of the maintenance? No, it's all I, part I, of the deal. Risky knows the project. Uh, they, they sell you power, but they can't sell you power. They don't make it. So you're all committed to buy what they deliver. And, and so they be out there. And thousands of dollars per day. Ember. If the snow off the panels, they'll get the snow off. You can guarantee that we'll never run out of well, you'll always be able to provide the power that we sign up. Alright. I just want to that. I'd like, like to ask a little question. Do you can the district do you have any kind of sense of the other municipalities or yeah. has there been some talk? Other than other than a few towns like Townsend and Putney who have already got their own projects and have already com committed their uh, their uh, consumption to those projects. Right. I think there's a lot of interest in the uh, in the district. Well, what would our first part, the first step in the commitment be? It's so hard as as we have to document uh, this subscription and agency agreement. document. And when, when laws come to that document, 
I could look at it before the rest of them. <laughs> but you'll get a lot of document. <laughs> the non-negotiable document. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's the name trying to... So yeah. four megawatts is a, is a lot. I, I, I don't understand that part well, of it. Well, as you know, the Jamaica would use about 1% of that. Yeah. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, so uh, it's very right. confusing, which is what he has right up there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I'll just probably something we wouldn't discuss, but say we do get a new town garage, and would there be any way we can figure out the estimated usage of? Well, we can always we can always commit to more than we, we use. That's not necessarily a good thing. No. But as as Andy said, we can we can be looking for some of this additional power. Let's assume that uh, another town has a decrease in power. We could take that decrease. And they probably would be happy. Let's right. assuming that you sell your entire four megawatts. Mm -hmm. If there's any buffer time in there, you said that once every four. You said four times a year, we can change. So in theory, if you got some extra capacity and we needed another building, which is minuscule compared to its capacity, right. we could buy in somewhere one of those times of the year. Yeah, I, I think that one, I mean, this was one user that got a grab room, mm -hmm. uh, and you no know, changes. Mm -hmm. They would just sort of try all their various meters. In the other end, if, if 15 towns participated at schools, all town governments got involved, then you've got a lot of payers. And, and towns make decisions that change power utilization. And so I would envision in that case that there'd be a market mm -hmm. each year for, for ex exchanging yeah. uh, power. We need less or we need more. What have we got? And, and there was a reshuffling of the deck to do that. Yeah. That's, that's the beauty of a large project uh, where all you have our notes change. And that's which billing. So it's relative to make that change. Andy mentioned something that kind of struck me, and it's in his presentation. Uh, we actually are buying, we would be buying a percentage of the project. In essence, we'd be buying however many panels it took to meet our needs. So in essence, it's, it's almost like putting those panels on our own buildings, except that they happen to be in a different location, and we don't have to put the upfront money to do it, and um, yet we reap the benefits. You don't have to put any money. No. No? Yeah. Okay. This is truly community. The only thing that's actually cost you is legal fees for the district. Then. So the district has put some money out to, to negotiate this deal. So in theory, okay, you have to put I out asked a little you bit before, are we paying for something? We've got to be paying for something. <laughs> See? <laughs> That's so there. Plus Paul's looking over. Well, that comes out of our assessment. That comes right? out of your assessment. Yes. So, so, okay, we're so we're so we're paying that anyway. So my assessment comes out, this, we won't have extra. The, what we pay for the assessment, I, I just paid them $3,000 for the first quarter. It's 13004 Right. OK. A year? And, uh, yeah. yeah, I just paid them. The first quarter. Yeah. So it's not going to be. We're not. It's not going to be anything additional. No, because actually okay. that assessment is only our operating costs. Okay, and that's part of your operating right. costs. Like the actual the money that we're talking about for the legal fees will come out of the uh, assessment. The no, the uh, fee that we will eventually get for. Uh, okay. For. So uh, you won't lease. get an extra bill from Women's Waste no. for twenty thousand dollars. Not for twenty thousand dollars. Okay. Oh, you'll get. You'll get reduction. Okay. Very interesting because, uh, uh, in essence, we pay thirteen thousand a year. Yet if we save six or seven or eight thousand. That's like, you know, a big savings on our assessment. And then when you have when you spend a, a least amount, that's another twenty four percent that you're saving. You're up to saving almost eighty percent of the assessment amount. Right. This project is a very big win. <laughs> <laughs> you do understand, however. When anybody comes in and says, look, I'm going to give you the planet, 
we get just a little nervous. Is that well, I, did, I did some math. Yeah. As you know, we're paying them 13.9 cents at 4 million megawatts a year. That's $6,560,000 a year. So if you take that over 20 years, you can see how much they're reaping mm. for their development costs. Yeah. I mean, they're not hurt. No. They're not hurt. Well, you said no. that. So you're going to be providing us a, a, a fruit basket for Christmas. Not <laughs> <laughs> 75%, not 50. <laughs> well, you've got it when you count the improvement. Share the least. <laughs> We'll just wait now for the document, the documents, and then we will make our decision after we read the documents sure. and have our attorney um, do that. It certainly sounds like the mood of the community. Most of the community. Oh, I, I, I know. Favor, yeah. I, yeah, I'm, I'm in favor. It's just that I don't want all the garbage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and see, clearly, uh, interesting enough, you and I very seldomly share the same anxieties. But, but I'm worried about the weather. You're worried about the death. Yeah, so yeah. I think we have to bite the bullet. Right here. Yeah, I know. Yeah, the good news, of course, is that this is on an in industrial area. Yeah. 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 Right and, 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 and I said it's that at the beginning. But the fact is that it's on the landfill. I think that's great. That's working with landfill. But. <laughs> All right. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thank you very much. Good night. Good night. Good night. Okay. Whoa. All right. Okay. All right. Other business. Who skipped on me? All right. Let's. I'm gonna go to Judy. Judy. You want me to start? Sure. Okay. Uh, when the, uh, I mean, our transfer station. We had some people leave some garbage outside of the gate, and we tracked them down. Actually, we had some good information, but. We need to be able to track that a little bit more closely. I think let the sheriff do the figuring out. Well, we didn't, uh, this is the stuff that marked up. And we yeah. Right. So they really didn't amount to anything. Well, the, uh, I think there are there is some information that we can follow we up can. on. We can. We did. I checked the name, Richard Foyle. There's no such person that I'm talking here. And these are uh, credit cards. Uh, yeah, could, uh, couldn't we follow up on the credit cards? No, we can't. Uh, I did check with Terry. They will not give the name to the people. Uh, could the sheriff get that, though? Mm. Um, and that's that's really what I'm referring to. Yeah, Is I it possible that the I sheriff can follow up? I'll tell you right? who could is the state police. Yeah. I know. I, I think yeah. it's probably are people either who rented the place. But even so, they committed a... They um, let her. Yeah, they did let her. So we, we could. I think what we need to do is to. I know I've mentioned that, that but in the in our think, state police releases, I've mm -hmm. seen two, you know, impacted on two oh, have they? littering. Already. It's good. So I think, I think just checking here with our listeners list and so forth is. It's good to do it, but I think if we have that kind of information, we okay, really need see. to have it go farther. I can farther. check with the sheriff's card to see if they can find out who do the credit cards. I don't know if they yeah. do that. Because I'm sure that they can get that information. Yeah, I have no idea. Um, so, all right, I will give them a call. I just think that it's good to bring it up that, yeah. if, you know, we're sitting right. here not doing anything about it or at least talking right. about it, then it's going to be all right to leave stuff outside. The exactly. And, it's, it's against and, the law. and what I had written to uh, Lex about it is that we really need to pursue it because uh, it reminds me of when I was a school teacher. If I let things go early in the year, it just got worse. When I put my foot down in the beginning of the year, things got better. So I really would like to try to pursue that with the police. I'll check with, the with this okay. sheriff's department and see if they yeah. can do that. Because I agree with what Annie just said too. Um, the other thing is we're having difficulty with the paper. I think I brought that up the last time. Uh, Wyndham Solid Waste does not have uh, a small container at the moment. But what's happening is, is that uh, 
it looks like the container uh, for paper recycling is half empty. And then all of a sudden, over the weekend, uh, we get uh, some of the people that do the collecting and they fill it up to the top just over the weekend so that we are having problems, um, not having enough space. Then the, the doors have to be closed and then uh, Mark is saving it in one of the containers down. And of course that makes extra work then to have to lift it up and put it when it's empty. So we've got to figure something out. Either ask the, uh, the caretakers to come at a different time uh, and not over the weekend so that whatever, but it's not a good situation right now. Um, but otherwise, things are going well. Uh, and then to move to the second one, the well. Uh, the Smith family, as I had mentioned, um, I had sent them a proposal from our meeting last time about it, and I gave them the two options. One was that we go in and share the well together, uh, and that we explore uh, what they found out from the engineer, and, uh, and that the expenses would be shared. And that was plan A, and plan B was that if they didn't feel like they could do it at this time, that uh, what would happen is that we would put that into the easement and have it so that they could connect and, uh, and later they could do that, but we would basically own the well because we would be paying and it would be much easier. Uh, I got a, an email, a phone call back and he said to me that uh, he would really like to go plan A and get the well. So we're, we're doing the different things. I talked to Chris Tomberg and got a message from him the other day saying that, you know, we've got to get a new engineering, I, I knew that, uh, engineering uh, plan. We have to re-permit it and, um, and a new easement. So it, it's almost like we're kind of beginning at, right at the beginning again. But in the long run, if we are able to share the cost of the well, uh, it, it's better to go that. And it's going to be a lot easier to go up the Smith side than it is um, on the other side. So uh, that's where things stand. Uh, we're not going in, we still fall within the private sector. We're not into that the town is producing um, a water system for people to join. So it's a whole different permit kind of thing. Okay, so let's hope in your Job security. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, Lou? Do you have anything? No. No? Okay. Uh, Judy just spoke of the well and uh, a little bit about the transfer stations and garbage being left that we're going to pursue it and yeah. take care of that. Do we know who left it? Yeah, we, well, we don't. We have uh, somebody use their uh, credit card. So the credit card, and I, I think we need to ask the sheriff. Uh, if they will find out who that is, so that they can follow up. I don't think we should let it go. No, I think I think the, the, the public has to know that right. we're going to do something. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly where I'm at. So, Paul? Well, a couple of quick things uh, for the road commissioner's chair. The uh, work on the water street's going well. We're at the town, the thing's moving pretty well on that one. We have now uh, cut Pikes Falls Road, just this side of um, yeah. Delwood. We anticipate we should all plan on that being um, undrivable until late September at this point. They're moving as quickly as they can, but we have some restrictions on the concrete uh, producer. So plan on the end of September. Okay. That's it. That's it. Andy? 
Oh, can you also fill us in on the uh, Goodyville Bridge? Yeah. Well, the Goodyville Bridge situation is unclear to us all since nothing's been done for several weeks. Um, at this point, we're waiting for them to actually get started. Um, I don't, I don't. I was out there this morning, little has been done. And they, so, have they ordered the infrastructure? We don't know that. We thought they had done that some time ago because the precast is the issue, whether they can get everything done and then when they get it done and everything's prepared, then they can start putting it in there. When I, I is heard, that what they're waiting for, do you think? Well, that's the timing. It's not ready now, but I don't know. There may be something else holding up. I haven't talked to the, uh, to the company Maybe uh, we should in a few weeks. Company again. Yeah. Are we going to be in trouble with FEMA because of the uh, well, completion? Well, Mary Andes is coming uh, tomorrow. No, the day after tomorrow. Uh -huh. We'll find out. We haven't got anything in writing yet, but she's been very encouraging that that. Um, I did take the opportunity to ask for the extension to September of 2016 because I know we're going to have to do some paving next spring because they're going to. It's just not going to be ready. Yet. So it's not going to be done. In case there's something else that goes wrong, go to 2016. She was very encouraging about that. She said people think this is going to go easily. Um, especially since a big chunk of why we're taking this long is because it took this long for FEMA to, to give us permission. So I wish I could say, oh yeah, no problem, no problem, but the truth is we don't have anything in writing. Right. But no problem. FEMA plays words. Yeah. Well, the bridge is supposed to be, um, except for the paving for the, the two approaches, is supposed to be done by, foot by the end of December. So that's the, that's the deadline right now that we were originally uh, contracted for. Mm -hmm. but, uh, so is there a penalty clause if they There is a penalty clause that will cost them to go beyond that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just to hear say about the bridge from our, our rep from Oliver that he said that once they get going on a project like that they're pretty fast and, and uh, mention the company's name. Yeah. And, uh, I, I don't know if he was talking about that skirt, that same bridge having been replaced before, how quick it was, or another one like it. But the thing, he didn't seem, I don't want to quote everything he told him, but he didn't seem to be too worried about it. But he may have had some other things on his mind. The company has a good reputation, and we don't have any control over the precasters. Right. Yeah. They, so there's a lot of factors that are just. Because I asked him about it, because he was on my road asking about it. Water Street, but other than that, I don't really have anything. Okay. Um, last meeting, Mr. We got a letter from Mr. Taylor on Golden Road. I called him and spoke with him and explained what happened. Um, and even that day, the town guys had even greeted that road, so I told him the road closed while the sun was there. And sorry that happened. Um, and he was he was very nice. So everything he saw, he signed with everything. And our auditors started today. We're auditing our books, so we will have our audit um, more in time for our meeting. Yeah. That's it. Are they in the uh, town offices for the next few days? They're here. They work here. As I said, mm -hmm. they're in. Because I, I have a couple of questions. I've been. Waiting to ask them. I mean, I, I'm sure they're coming back. So they were here today. I don't know what their schedule is, but usually once they come, they're here for the. I'll give Terry a call. Maybe I'll come down tomorrow and ask these questions. Okay. So it will be ready for town meeting now? It definitely will be ready. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Yeah, like so. All right. If we have nothing else, we have a motion to adjourn. Uh, My man, motion. A motion to adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> I make a move for you, Terry. Do you have a second? Second. Any further discussion? Anyone in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, Thank you.